Hey, yo, what is up, guys? So there's been a lot of talk recently about what the best WWE storylines of the past 20, 30 years have been because of how great the Sami Zayn, uh, Honorary Oos, the Bloodline story has been for WWE. It really started back in August with Kevin Owens. Well, I mean, it started before that in June, and then it went all the way up to this past Saturday, but it really got kicked into gear with Kevin Owens wanting to challenge Roman Reigns in August there. So this storyline has been building for a really, really long time. And it obviously had such a dramatic conclusion recently, not conclusion, but chapter in it, that it has people saying that it's the best storyline of the past, what is it, like 20 years. So I began thinking about it. I'm like, I wonder what the best wrestling stories have been. And now this isn't all of them, but this isn't like, not like of all time. This is only since like about... 2010-ish is where I'm really considering the cutoff date for this. So I'll get into, like, I have some, like, that I would say are, like, on the same level as the Bloodline story we just had. And so I also have some honorable mentions I'd like to start with here. So in case people say, oh, well, you missed this one. This isn't everyone ever. This is only this ones that I was able to come up with. I found 16, actually. So we'll briefly go over the honorable mentions. So I kind of came up with, like, little titles for them. But you'll make sense once you actually hear them so yeah so 434 days cm punk's title reign which concluded with him losing to the rock and him starting beating alberto del rio at survivor series in new york so this whole story obviously it was really influential to the wrestling business and cm punk's career it's really what put him on the map and yeah, so it conclu- it had a lot of great stories with Daniel Bryan, John Cena, John Laurinaitis, and Chris Jericho were in there. Ryback was also evol- involved in it. So yeah, there was just some notable names who were all involved in this. Anyways, very, very influential title reign here. Ziggler can't win the big one. Uh, this was a storyline involving Dolph Ziggler and The Miz, which I really, really liked. It was from SmackDown in 2016. So, yeah, this is just one that I thought, and I was like, man, that was just such a good feud. So I wanted to include it in here because it was a really, really good feud. It would be on the lower end, really lower end of this, but I'd say it was really, really good. So just everything that was involved in it. So, yeah, next up, The Man Brock couldn't beat. Now, this one, it didn't have so much on the high emotional value as it did on the just sports and competitive (laughs) side about how Brock Lesnar couldn't beat Bill Goldberg and how Goldberg pretty much was squashing him at every turn and it was actually just really really entertaining so I would say it had a really great conclusion with their match at WrestleMania 33 so yeah this match here I would heavily include next up we have 16 time John Cena here uh, John Cena tying Ric Flair's world title record with starting with his feud with AJ Styles and about July of 2016 culminating at, in about like the elimination chamber where I think AJ actually eliminated John Cena but John Cena ended up winning his world championship here AJ Styles becomes a world champion in his first year in WWE so yeah this had a lot of this was a really really good feud John Cena even compared it to a feud with The Rock so yeah, I would really consider this to be one of one of the best feuds and stories of WWE or the last 10, 10 years or so. So next up, we have the best friend story, Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho. We all know Festival of Friendship. Um, why is my name on the list? And this, this whole thing concludes just so much great uh, character and promos and matches between like with Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho starting off in about when Kevin Owens won the title in that fatal four way on raw back in fall of 2016 with him and Jericho getting together and fighting the shield boys, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns leading all the way up to, I believe it was about backlash 2017. I believe they had a few more matches after WrestleMania. I just can't really remember what the end for this was, but I remember it being really, really entertaining and the whole list just was so great. So yeah, easily on there. Uh, next up, we got Kofi Mania. I don't even really need to explain this one. Kofi Kingston winning the championship at WrestleMania 30, 35. Yeah, great moment for Kofi. Great story. Uh, Ruthless Aggression Finale. I call it that because this is the end of the Randy Orton Edge feud, and it's really the end of like a Ruthless Aggression era feud between two of the biggest stars of that era starting in January of 2020, and it kind of went till about January of 2021 where they had their last match on Raw, but they had 
just really entertaining and memorable promos and matches all throughout this feud. So even though I don't like a lot during the pandemic era, this was definitely the shining beacon of it was Randy Orton and Edge's feud. So yeah, right there, easy peasy. Now, RK bro, easily, again, involving Randy Orton here. Uh, great character development for Randy Orton, actually developing a friend that he doesn't actually betray or get betrayed by because the story started with Riddle wanting to be a tag team, all the way concluding with Riddle challenging Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship, trying to avenge Randy and getting hurt in the tag team unification match. Again, all the promos and just how over these two guys were and how beloved they were by the audience. And they're even in the final four of the Royal Rumble that year. So yeah, our Cray bro, easily one of the best, best stories. I got to include that one very, very easily. So starting off the list of like stories, I would say, now those were just like really, really good ones, but I wouldn't say those were like, like equal to the bloodline storyline. So here are the ones I would say are very equal to. So this one actually, you could argue started back in the late nineties, but it was really started at WrestleMania 25 with Shawn Michaels and the undertaker cumulating, uh, cumulating at WrestleMania 26 with the streak versus career match. And it just has that great, great promo with the running up the hill by place bow. And it just covers the whole story of Shawn Michaels having to put his career on the line to get that one last chance to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And yeah, it just, everything about it, all the way to Shawn Michaels' performance at the Royal Rumble, to Shawn looking down at the slam and going, Undertaker, I can beat you. And it just it had a lot of emotion and him costing The Undertaker the match at Elimination Chamber. So it just had, it just had a great, great story and great emotion and a great send-off to Shawn Michaels' retirement at the end there. So the whole ending of Shawn Michaels' career is really what it's called. But I call it HBK versus The Streak because it ended, he ended up losing his career to it and actually did honor it despite coming back for some Saudi money. Can't blame him for that, really. Um, so moving on here, I, anyways, I love the Shawn Michaels Undertaker feud. It's, one, it's like probably my top three. I love, I love those matches so much to death. Uh, the next one up here, and I know a lot of people are going to be kind of surprised by this, but I call it One More Match by our boy Christian. Christian, starting with Christian winning, well, it starts really with Edge retiring. Christian winning the world title from Alberto Del Rio and Extreme Rules. And yeah, so he ends up having a whole series of matches with Randy Orton after this, all culminating him. He just needing one more match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And yeah, this was just really great wrestling all around. It was just, the matches were so good. And the story of it was just so good with Christian doing whatever it takes to beat Randy Orton and then him getting the nutshot championship win and the cr crowd in Chicago going absolutely nuts for it and him having a match with, with Randy Orton at the SummerSlam, which was just an amazing match. So this whole buildup and story and the promos, I remember Christian cutting promos from like a bar when they were in Vegas and stuff. And yeah, this is just a really, really good one that I think a lot of people kind of forgot about, but it is every bit as good. It's just, it's a, like, I, you know, not everything has to be super emotional to be considered great. I think like, like with the Brock and Goldberg, I mentioned earlier, just really a lot of fun and, and it being really entertaining makes a great story too. So yeah, I consider that there. So next up, this also is happening about the same time. Obviously, you know what I'm trying to talk about here, the summer of punk. This is the CM Punk pipe bomb from about June to about August, really, with that feud with John Cena and oh, he, him leaving the company and them splitting the title belts and Ray and John Cena having that match and they were having the, CM Punk having that great match in Chicago with John Cena at Money in the Bank, at the almighty Money in the Bank 2011, folks. Uh, so yeah, very, very, what is it? Yeah, there we go. So yeah, a very, very influential feud, very, very influential promo by CM Punk. And yeah, everything about this was just really, really great with the ending of, I mean, the match itself with CM Punk blowing a kiss to Vince McMahon and running through the crowd. And it just seemed like the WWE is just in total chaos, which is when I think it's actually at its best when they act like they're in total chaos. So yeah, uh, the, not enough great things to say about that. Everyone already knows about it. It completely had ripples that are still around in the wrestling business today with CM Punk just becoming such a major star at that time. And obviously John Cena, we don't, he, him being the Babe Ruth of WWE, which that was really touched upon in the storyline. So 
yeah, pretty easy, easy pick there. Uh, next up, we have the end of the era with Triple H versus The Undertaker. This started with Triple H and Undertaker coming back in early 2011. Them not even saying anything to each other, just looking at the WrestleMania sign. And yeah, just I remember watching those promos and how awesome the whole build up to this was and how you just couldn't wait to see them fight. But, you know, we kind of had to forget about their match at WrestleMania 17. Either way, they did a great job of building this up and it really stole the show at WrestleMania 27. Just an amazing match. I remember I used to watch it all the time as a kid and it was just such a great, great match. And especially the story in the match with uh, Triple H trying to do anything he could to put The Undertaker away. And and Undertaker still fighting, eventually catching Triple H in a Hell's Gate, and Undertaker not being able to walk out, and then leading to HBK getting involved next year at WrestleMania 28 with the end of an era match. So just a great storyline with them helping carry Triple H out, and the, the super kick into the pedigree, and Shawn Michaels not wanting to look at what the Undertaker is doing to Triple H, and it's just... Great story, man. It just everything about this was just top tier and yeah, just epic and amazing. I really, really loved it and I love those matches. So yeah. So also a story that happened started at WrestleMania 27 and went everything starts in 2011, man. 2011 was just such a great year. And we all know what I'm gonna say here. It's the once in a lifetime, I know that's what we'll call the few or the story here was uh, John Cena versus The Rock, their whole build-up to this match. It's the biggest match in wrestling history, I believe, pay-per-view-wise. And that's undisputable. I know that might bug some people, but it's true because John Cena's one half of the biggest match in wrestling history. And yeah, just the promos leading up to this were really, really heated. And I remember the one where The Rock had written his promo on his arm and then John Cena, to fuck with him, wrote his promo on his arm and then like was like looking at, oh man, it was really, really funny. <laughs> and... Yeah, just a lot of great stuff came out of this. I, I know it wasn't a great buy, buy rate, but seeing The Rock come back in 2011 and having that match at Survivor Series and then the, the match itself at WrestleMania 28 was a really great match. And the whole build of John Cena being kind of on a downward spiral and then him winning the Royal Rumble and The Rock winning the championship at the Royal Rumble and then having the, having the promos you're not getting your title back, Jack. <laughs> and I remember Rock saying that to Cena. And even the entrances to the WrestleMania 28 match were just amazing. So yeah, this is just an all-time big money feud. And it makes no it, it makes perfect sense why WWE would do it two years in a row because it was just such a huge, huge sell. Like I they made probably so much money off that. So and especially with John Cena versus The Rock, just it came off as just the pinnacle of the wrestling industry of the time. So, yeah. Next up is a forgotten one that a lot of people don't really talk about. and it's But it's such a great story and it's such a great feud that no one really talks about it. And that is the Rhodes family fight for their jobs. And, yeah, so it starts with Cody. The authority obviously kicked into gear after SummerSlam 2013. And... Randy Orton sees Cody Rhodes backstage. And this is like, I always thought Cody was the dude and I thought Cody was a great wrestler and I thought he had everything it meant to be a world title. Uh, and now we're finally seeing that, but yeah, he starts off with Randy Orton and Cody Rhodes having a match where Cody Rhodes loses his job. And that was a really great match. Then gold dust comes back and has a great match with Randy Orton. And then it ultimately culminates with the shield, uh, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins versus the Rhodes brothers at, battleground 2013 where they have that great tag team match and it's just such an amazing storytelling match and i loved it so much and dusty Rhodes was there and it's just so great to see those guys have that moment because dusty Rhodes, i don't think was alive much longer after this but it was just such such an amazing moment for them and yeah and then it culminates with gold dust and cody Rhodes winning the tag team championships from the shield on raw a couple weeks later and yeah i remember just watching this and just like it was so good. Like, and I know like the story, the emotion, this is one of the ones that matches the emotion of the current bloodline story. So yeah, just such an amazing, amazing story here. And I loved it. And I know it's a part of the overarching branch of the authority, which we'll talk about again in a minute here. Cause we all know which one's eventually coming up, but first we're going to talk about the next, the next great, uh, feud here, which is, 
you're talking to the Hounds, Wyatt family. And I always remember that that uh, promo from Dean Ambrose. It was this. This was such the fans made this just such a big deal. Was the Shield versus the Whites? These two factions were just so so over. People really lo- like gravitated towards them. They were both just young badasses who had all this potential in the future of the wrestling business. And it was just all. It was kind of like watching Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, like the Hart Foundation Rockers matches in like the late eighties, and then just to see where they all go. But like this is just. This is just such a big feud here for them. And, like, their match at Elimination Chamber. And, like, the leading up, they weren't even touching. They were just having these wicked stare-downs and promos. And, like, man, there's this great promo on YouTube where they have, like, it's, like, two and a half minutes. And it's, like, the whole build-up to it. And it's just such an amazing, amazing match. And it's just one of those, like, for me, on a personal level, it took, uh, like, I remember being, like, kind of, like, having a shitty time at high school at that point in time, but watching this feud and just how great it was, it really just like helped ease everything in my life and like gave like perspective into things. Cause it just had, it had such emotion into it with the shield possibly breaking up and this new dominant faction in the Wyatt family coming and Bray Wyatt, who was going to go on to become a major star and the shield who we all know were going to be major stars. So just such an amazing feud. And I love every minute of this. And yeah, just great stuff here. Next up, we got, and lastly, uh, this is where I'll cut out the video, was with, obviously I mentioned earlier, the authority, we all know the yes movement was just such an awesome, awesome story. Starting with Daniel Bryan versus John Cena at SummerSlam 2013. And then the with that great match, and then Triple H pedigreeing, pedigreeing Daniel Bryan starting the authority with Randy Orton cashing in the money in the bank. Obviously they had their whole feud going all throughout the fall and them having a number of matches leading up to their final match at WrestleMania 30 involving Batista. And it just like the whole overarching thing of this, it just like there was so much chaos. And I mentioned earlier about how it's just great when there's just so much chaos going on with uh, Batista coming back and him getting, being rejected and booed by the fans. And John Cena and Randy Orton have that r- really good match. I really like it at the Royal Rumble. But fans just chanting everything in the crowd, like losing their minds over Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan having that great moment on Raw where the entire audience is just chanting yes. And just the whole build and lead up to this match with Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan having multiple matches, them competing at, what was it? It was like Night of Champions. Then they had another match at Hell in the Cell. And then they faced each other again in the elimination chamber and it just and all the way to the main event of wrestlemania which is really cool because normally they don't do that all the way with daniel bryan winning both matches at wrestlemania and the whole show was just so magical and it just had this great great feel to it and wrestlemania 30 is like one of my all-time favorite shows so and it was in new orleans and that was really cool and the whole segment on Raw where Triple H is trying to get rid of Daniel Bryan and all the people come out to the ring and they're all chanting yes and trying to get Daniel Bryan his WrestleMania spot. And even if they lucked into it, this is just such an amazing, amazing feud and I love it to death. And yeah, just a great story. And you can tell because I'm just like beaming, right? I'm glowing right now, dog. I'm glowing (laughs) about this. Anyways, well, I got to get out of here, guys. I'll be back at you with another video real quick here. And yeah, let me know what you thought of this one. What are your favorite wrestling stories and feuds of the past 10 years in WWE? So yeah, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and uh, peace out, dogs.